Greece, Turkey and Eastern Mediterranean. What's going on? What's the history behind all this? The matter is quite complicated. But first, let's start with what happening in the Eastern Mediterranean. Estimated that around 2 billion barrel soft oil and 4 trillion cubic metric of natural gas deposits lie in the seabed of the Eastern Mediterranean. In January 2090, Israel, Egypt, Italy, Greece, Jordan and Palestine created a consortium to look for oil and gas in the region but they, Turkey was not included. So it decided to send its own drilling ship to the Mediterranean in May 2019 and began seismic surveys and exploration drilling along the north coast of the Cyprus. Those areas concentrated within the Turkish continental shelf registered with the United Nations and Turkey's national oil company Turkish Petroleum has been granted license for exploration activities. Turkey also decided to climb its stake via diplomatic means in November 2019. The country signed the maritime agreement with Libya. Throughout this agreement, both countries expanded their exclusive economic zones, also known as EEZ, from the Turkish southern coast to Libya's northeast coast. And EEZ gives the country exclusive rights to fish drill and carry out other economic activities. This deal ensured that no Eastern Mediterranean energy settlement would take place without Ankara joining the negotiating table. Because the agreement clarifies that the Turkish Republic Northern Cyprus also has the right to resources in the area. Now let's back to the 1974 to see what happened then because it had a massive impact on today's situation. Historically, many of the disputes between Turkey and Greece stem from the Cyprus issue. During the Ottoman times, Turks came and settled in Cyprus. But when Cyprus gained independence from the United Kingdom in 1960, tension rose between the Greek Cyprus and the Turkey's living there in 1974 following a cup aimed at the annexation of Cyprus by Greece, Turkey intervened as a guarantor and in 1983 the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus was founded. Now Greece and Cyprus claim that the North still part of the Republic of Cyprus and do not recognize the Turkish Northern Cyprus. Therefore Greece says that this area is above its own continental shelf and so they have rights to any potential oil and gas and any drilling activity. Territory World editor at large Yusuf Erim says that maritime issues have always been a source of contention between Turkey and Greece because of the very unique geography of region when we opened up world map and we look at especially the agency share amount of Greek islands that are very close to Turkish coast when these islands project territorial weathers beyond three nutrical miles this creates an incredible bottleneck on Turkish coast this is the something that Turkey finds very unacceptable Turkish Greek disagreements over the agent are related to the agent status quo established by the 1923 Luzana Peace Treaty and the, of the basic elements of the political balance established by the Luzana Treaty is the status of the Eastern Asian Islands. During the Luzana negotiations, some historians believe that the Turkish delegation led by then Foreign Minister Ismet Inano did not come up with an effective strategy to hold on the crucial islands, primarily the islands of the Castellorizo, which were key of the country's security. After the Luzana Treaty, Greece signed another agreement with Italy over the status of islands, the 1947 Treaty of Paris. The treaty turned over the islands, commonly referred to as the Dodecanese to Greece. This treaty also sought to reconcile sovereignty over these islands with the security of Turkey by stipulating in Article 14 that these islands shall be and shall remain demilitarized but dispute Turkey's warnings. Greece appears to be militarizing the islands Castellorizo, also known as Maze, which is only two kilometers away from the Turkish southern coast, while the islands lies 600 kilometers from the mainland Greece. With this movie, Greece is violating Article 14 of the treaty. Turkey insists that in the islands that are far from the mainland and closer to Turkey can't have the continental shelf. As a peninsula state, Turkey has around 8,000 30 hundred thirty thirty kilometers of the coastline and it has more than 462 thousand square kilometers of potential maritime jurisdictional area which is the longest coastline in the mediterranean and in july 2020 
Turkey intensified its exploration activities in the region and put out the naval alert that it was sending. Horus raised seismic west cell close to the Greek island of Maze even before the ship left the port in Antalya. The Greek military was on standby. German's Chancellor Angela Merkel tried to calm both parties down which she partially managed. Then Greece went on to sign the deal with Egypt, forming another EEZ that Greece claimed would cancel the agreement between Turkey and Libya. The Turkish government has called the pact null and void and said that the area lies within its continental shelf. Greece has even announced that it will extend its territorial waters to 12 miles from 6 sitting. That extension is the line with international sea conventions, but Turkey argues that the special geographical properties of the agency where both countries have many scattered islands make the application of the 12 mile rule in this case problematic and still applies the 6 mile rule its islands in the Aegean. Ankara has called Greece 12 mile extension cause to go war as considers its territorial grab a diplomatic solution would be a win-win not only for Turkey but a win situation for Greece as well because at the end of the day this maritime jurisdiction is in the eastern Mediterranean and the agent doesn't need to be a zero-sum game. There is a tremendous amount of the wealth in these very important bodies of the weather and this is the something that Greece and Turkey as two neighbors for a millennia and most likely a millennia going forward as well should be able to share.